All right, there we should be. We have ao verbs, and agapao is I love, and it's a sacrificial love, but it's not the only ao verb. It's just the most common one, and so we're, we're going to use it. But what we have is we have the basic stem, and I'll highlight the stem for us. There's your stem. And everything that goes before the omega is the stem. Right? So what we do is we take that basic stem and we add omega. Oops. We add omega. O -S -A. Right? O -S -A. And then we add also, we add omen. Ette and Usi. And then we add Ain for the infinitive. Now, <clears throat> what we get into is when we do that, we have. Uh, you heard me, but I don't hear you. <laughs> yes, we can hear you talking. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Benjamin, and tell him we, we can hear you talking. But, yeah, I told him I heard you, Bobby. Do you hear Brother Fox? And he said, no, I can't hear you. So I said, ugh. OK, all right. Well, I'll go through this material. I-O verbs are not, there's not a whole lot of them, but there's several of them that are kind of important. Agapao is one of them. But what we have is we have the basic stem. Do you hear me now? Yes. OK. So our basic stem here, he can't hear me by answering, but all right. And there's your stem. And so we're going to take that stem, and in this case right here, it becomes a contraction because we have an alpha and an omega together. And so they they contract it. And so now the, it'll be in the lexicon as agapao, but it's most of the time it'll be contracted form in this form right here. <clears throat> now, when we get to the second person, you can see what, how it would uh, contract. So we'd have agapa, agap, agapa, and then ace, agapa, ace. And we have a diphthong and a, and a vowel together. That's just too much, too many vowel sounds. So it, it uh, the alpha then uh, has a circumflex on it to indicate that it has lost a, a vowel or a word, a letter. And it also will have uh, an iota subscript to tell us that the iota got dropped off too. All right. So that's what it's telling us. Down here in this one, we have A. Same thing happens and it becomes an alpha with an iota subscript. And over here, and it will be agapa omen. And so that becomes a long O sound, an omega. The alpha, Omicron becomes an omega. All right. And uh, we have other papayete. And again, it contracts again. So this is your forms, of the contractions, and they'll form that uh, virtually every time. Okay. Any questions there? Uh, Benjamin? Uh, no, sir, but I think uh, Bobby can hear you now, so I think we're okay. Good. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, good. I'm sorry about right. that. That's all right. All right. So what we have is we have, let's go back and uh, that's, uh, that you see this. It starts with the stem. And the stem is everything up to the omega. All right? And so that's, every, that's your stem. And so they'll build on that stem, and you'll you'll see that stem on all of these forms. Right down here, O, Ace, and the next one will be O, Ace, A, and then it'll become an Omen, Ete, Usi. And now whenever they contract it, the O just becomes the Omega, uh, gets a circumflex over it, and that tells us we lost a, we lost a letter. And we lost the, in this case, the alpha. And then we have, there's your stem up to the end of it. So we have there, we have ace. And so we have a diphthong, A, epsilon, iota, and alpha. 
and that becomes a contraction and it gets the circumflex and the iota subscript tells us that iota was lost as well. That's what that iota subscript on that alpha there, right there, tells us. And so we have OACE A and then we have up there. And of course, then we have the circumflex. We lost the epsilon and the iota subscript tell us the iota was dropped. That makes sense so far. Everybody okay with that? Yes, sir. And then agapa omen, and then the alpha and the omicron become an omega with the circumflex to tell us we lost the letter. And agapate, agapa ete, agapa ete, agapa ete. And uh, so the alpha and the epsilon. So, uh, we lose the epsilon and we get a circumflex. And agapa usi, so we have an alpha and a diphthong u, and that become agapa osi, agapa aposi, agaposi. And so we have the omega. And of course, the circumflex above it tells us we lost some, we dropped some letters. And we have the a ending for the infinitive. And of course, uh, that that whole a ending just becomes it gets dropped the epsilon alpha epsilon iota, and we have a alpha with a certain flex, and it then the new it continues with it. Okay, <coughs> the middle uh, passive works basically the same way. There's your stem up to that point. It's on my, and becomes a long O and the omega. And uh, so we see how, how they function. Any questions about that? Good. All right. Now, these words down here, we went through them last time. So there's any question. There's an AO verb. Ganao, Ganao is, an, is another one. And I'll write it up here. An A. Uh, uh oh, uh oh, I think it has two news in it. Yeah, put that like that. When I look at it, I'll be able to tell in the Greek. Yeah, that's the one, that's an uh oh verb. Yeah, that's that's a, an uh -oh word. And so uh, to beget, begetting. So, all right. Any questions there? But there, there's some other uh -oh verbs <clears throat> in the New Testament, not just this. All right. Any questions about any of these? All right. We got down to this right here. And we were going to do some translating. Is everyone ready to do this? We'll try to do as much as we can right here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, now here's the problem. He doesn't have ganao in our in our uh, vocabulary here, and that's that's too bad because he, he has ganao. Yeah, right, there it is. Yeah, it is. It's on the it yeah left side there. Yeah, it is. It's there. I was okay. So we do have it. Okay. Uh, Benjamin, I'm going to pick on you. Uh, that first one is a long okay. one. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Alrighty. So, uh, uh, ho theos agapa ton weon kai apostele tus angelus. Ton Uranon U Uranon uh, Apangel Apangelen Hoti Ho Apangelen Good Apangelen Yes, you're you're correct. Hoti Ho Huios Genatai Es Ton Cosmon. That's good. And okay. uh, I said, God loves the sun 
and sent out the angels from heaven to announce that the son begets the world for himself. Okay. Uh, is this active or passive voice? Genata, Genata. Genata, uh, yeah. it could be passive or middle, right? Okay. It could be passive or middle, correct. So try passive, try passive voice. Um, Your translation is real good. So try the passive voice and see how it fits. That the son, what? I said begets the world for himself. Um, I'm trying to think how it would be passive. <laughs> What's begotten? Is begotten. Oh, the, wor uh, the world is begotten. That the son is begotten. Oh, now, the whole wheels is what, what case? Oh, Wios. Wios is the. Uh, you can tell by the article what case it is. Uh, it, nominative, of course. Nominative. Yeah, nominative. The, yeah. What does that mean? It's the what for that verb? The subject. Okay, it's the subject. So it is the sign, if it's passive voice, well, he is being what? Begotten. Yeah, I, I see that. Uh, into the what? Into the world. Into the world. Okay. Now, it could be past tense. We could have had a past tense verb if we hadn't studied them yet. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. So he sent the angels to announce. Well, that sounds like the birth of Christ, the announcement of his birth when the angels came. Kind of a, a made up. A made up sentence, but it kind of fits in with that, doesn't it? Right. I got a question. Yes. On the postele, a postele, that's active, pre, uh, present active indicative. It yes. Sends out, wouldn't it? He sends. Sends? Okay. Right. And of course, if it's speaking of when the angels were, going back in time when the angels were were sent out to announce his birth, that would fit pretty well with it. But of course, we haven't studied past tense verbs yet, so he can't really make a sentence out with the past tense. <laughs> so that is kind of stuck with having to so have something in the present tense for right now. Mm. Well, I, I sent you an article by Bill, Bill Montz on that word, uh, begot. Uh, you probably, uh, I glanced at it, but I didn't have time okay. to look at it. Just, I just thought uh, I, we're having a lectureship this week on uh, Saturday and Sunday, and I'm kind of. Uh, yeah, I'll, right. I'll, I'll get to it within a but week. I, I, I just thought I thought it was just interesting that here we were studying this word, and all of a sudden he sends me that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so brother Fox, what what would the final uh, sentence be in the passive there? I, I just want to write that as a separate one. God I'm not loves, sure I fully caught God, it. God loves the Son, and He sends the angels of heaven. All right. And of the and heaven is plural of the heavens to announce. So that's to announce. That's a purpose statement to announce that the son is is begotten into in the world or into the world. I would probably have had in uh, ain with the with the locative case, but into the world. So the begetting brought him into the world. Okay. So okay. that's the that's the begatting brought him into the world. Does that make sense? Yep. Thank you. Yeah, I put there has been born. Well, of course, this is not past tense. This is present tense. Okay. We're, we're stuck with we haven't studied any past tense verbs yet. All right. But we're kind of stuck with using the present <laughs> tense right now. Okay. It makes it a little bit more awkward. Than we would like to see that past tense, but. Later on, we can take this same sentence and put it in past tense. 
Mm -hmm. We actually studied some past tense verbs. There's four different kind, kinds of past tense verbs, okay? Uh, two main ones are aorist and imperfect. We have the, imper the, uh, we have the perfect tense, which uh, is past tense action with continuing results. Okay, and then we have the pluperfect tense, which is really past perfect is all it is, okay? Right? And uh, it's called pluperfect, past perfect is called pluperfect in the English, which you get in the English grammar. Okay. Now, okay, does that help everybody? Yes, sir. So we'll get to those past tense verbs a little bit later. I would probably get to them before the end of this year. All right, I'll just have to look at, uh, at our outline, but we're pretty close to them right now. All right, the next one is a short one. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. Right down to there, that's that's pretty. And I may just have you to do two of them, if you would. Okay. Uh, probably do this one and do the next one, since we've overloaded. The okay. I'll take, okay, I'll take both of them. <laughs> okay, they're both short. You're, okay. still, you're still getting out easy. Okay. All right. Ho vios est in ho Christos, ho Kyrios. The Son is the Christ, the Lord. Okay, now, <clears throat> Eston is, is a being verb. We haven't studied them yet. They're, they're just a lesson or two away from us. And uh, here's the thing. Some of your verbs take their object in the accusative case. Most, uh, all finite verbs do. Uh, transitive verbs do. Finite verbs, uh, transitive verbs take their object in the uh, accusative case. Uh, but, a being verb is not transitive. And so in, in English and in Greek, a being verb takes its object in the as a predicate nominative or a predicate adjective. And so the son is, that's a being verb, he is the Christ, the Lord. Now, the son is the subject and the Christ and the Lord are predicate nominatives renaming the subject, okay? Does that make sense? Yes, sir. And so, ame, which is, uh, Eston is from the verb ame. Let me write it out down here so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm gonna get my mouse to move around. All right. All right. Well, well. There I am. There's Amy. Right there. That that is the being verb. That's first person singular of I am. That's that's literally translated I am. Okay. And this word right here comes from it. Eston, and that's third person singular of that of that verb. Okay, he is the son. He is literally. He is what? He is the Christ, mm -hmm. uh, the Anointed One, the Lord. That's the benevolent Lord. Okay. Questions? I don't have the diacritical markings on it, but uh, that's the that's the word with the diacritical markings. It'll be a smooth breathing over the iota and, a, and an acute accent over the iota. Excuse me. I'm sorry, baby. Okay. Linda. Go down the hall. Okay. Right. <laughs> what, what, what just happened? <laughs> well, my wife's phone rang, is ringing. She's embarrassed. She can't get it to. It's starting to play something. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Let's go back up here now. Let's take the next one up here. 
Okay, ho huyas esten ho lagas. The sun is the word. Esten. And so the subject is ho huyas, and uh, that's the sun. And he is, and uh, logos is the word for word. Now then there's several different Greek words for word. And uh, there's a lot of discussion about what it means when it says the beginning was the word, logos, logos, and the word was with God and the word was God. <clears throat> logos comes from the verb lego. I think we've already had it, as I say. But it carries the idea of collected thoughts. I I suspect it's my suspicion that when it says he's the word by the choice of this word rather than some other words that are also translated word, that he's but what he's doing is he is saying Jesus is the collected thoughts of the mind of God. And he, he lived according to the collective thoughts and he came to the earth and perfectly lived as uh, to display and show us what God is. The Old Testament told the Jews about God and told them God is this, God is that, God is not this, God is not that. But Jesus came and lived and showed us what God is. That's, that's my interpretation of this. And again, it's Marion's interpretation and could be wrong, okay? Any question there? That's logos or logos. I'm trying to say logos. All right. All right. This is right out of John 1, chapter 1. Okay, if you will there. If you will there, uh, Benjamin, go ahead. Pick on it. Uh, logos. Ain and RK pros ton theon Kai ain theos. Okay. And I said, uh, the word was in the beginning with God and was God. Okay. The word was being in the beginning with God. Okay. It's a being verb. He existed in the beginning with God, see? Not just in the mind of God, he existed in the, there in the beginning. Now the word beginning, we said last week, remember, RK doesn't have an article with it. Uh, because how many beginnings are there for any one thing? Just one. And there's just one, so it doesn't need an article. So it never has the article. And this is right from John 1, chapter 1 of John. Uh, the word was being in the beginning. And I think that, that we have to put the word the there for good English. And that's with or toward God. And again, tone theon is the true God and was being God. He was, he was, he was in the beginning was, the word was being in the beginning with God and was being God, was being deity. So right. we should add uh, the word being in there? Well, this is a being verb. It's yeah. Being, I am, it's a being verb. It's considered a being verb. Mm -hmm. yeah. That makes sense? It changed, man. <laughs> I, I, uh, that maybe that's why I was confused. I, I thought was is the being part, but you're saying you, you actually include uh, the word being as well. I've, I've added it in there because it's that it's it is a being word was being, and was, and you can just argue well enough, and it's pro and that the translator didn't put it in there for standard translation, but you know, the idea of a being verb is there. In the beginning was being the word. The word was being in the beginning and toward the God, toward God, with God, and was being God. He was being deity. 
And so I like the being there because it really stresses his existence in the beginning. And it's part of the of a me, the, the being verb, a me. Does that help? Well, that, you'll have to chew on that and think about that yourself when we get to that. We'll Christ see is, that later, I mean, in full. Is that what you're going to tell us also? That this will come up again later and that to where we'll see all of that? Well, we're going to look at Amy. We'll have a whole, one of the lessons will, will be, Amy is a very important word. Yes. Oh, yeah, I understand that. And so, I just pretty soon we have a lesson on it. I don't know. I think in that, uh, three or four weeks we'll, be, we'll, be, we'll go through it. Of course, it'll be present tense, and we we'll won't look at the past tense and so forth. But it's it shows because it's in the it's a present active voice, present tense. It's continuous action. Okay, hmm. and it's a being verb. He was being. Say that's that's continuous in the beginning with God, and was being. God or deity. And I put God and then I put deity in parentheses or footnote it deity. The Jehovah's Witnesses like to say he was a God, was being, was a God. And so, but it's saying he was being deity. Now, then without the article, now I want you to notice here, we come back up here and I'll highlight it. Here and here we have the article with the word God, uh, Son. And right here we have the article with the word God. And I think, yeah, right up here, article with the word God. With the article, it indicates a person, right? And it indicates, it points out here. And it's always with God, it always is the true God. And, and the article is never used with false gods in the Bible, as far as I know. Now, right here, he was being with God, with the true deity, and was God. Now, the fact that it doesn't have the article here indicates the quality or nature, and it's qualitative. Now, I have in the notes that I gave you, uh, what's those, the lexicon and grammar and syntax notes, file that I sent you, you can go and find where the word God is is found. And uh, what you can do is just search for the word God, G-O-D, and uh, do a control H, search for it, and find it. And you'll find a discussion somewhere along in there uh, about the word God with and without the article. But without the article, it's indicating quality. It has the nature. So he has the nature was being deity. That's why I like to translate it deity. He, he was having the nature of deity, which is a God nature, the God nature. He had the God nature. Does that make sense? It is not saying he was a God as a Jehovah's Witness. Uh, New World Translation, I think, translates or mistranslates it, I should say. Any questions there? No, sir. You said that was, you said that was under God in your lexicon. Yes. Okay. And what I'll do is I will try to remember tonight to search for it and tell you what page number in that file it's on. And if you don't have that file, let me know, and I'll just send it to you tonight. I have it. Okay. All right. Okay, but I'll I'll try to find it for you and, and let you know, okay, where it is, okay? All right. And I may do it after class is over right now. I'll do it when I get home probably, though. be easier on my big computer. All right, the next one here now. Who read last? Was it? Uh, me. Benjamin, okay. If you would, there, take this next one here, if you would, there. Okay. Bobby, please. Oh, we are so zetas no sus tong anthro pong. Okay. The son saves the sick of the people. 
All right. And sozo could be saves or healed. Yes. So it's a contextual question. Now, they could be sick spiritually, and he saves them. Or he could save the sick of man, of men, of mankind, say, anthropos is mankind. Or he, that's both men and women. Um, and it could be the son heals the sick of, of, the, of, man, of men, of mankind. But what we have is it is it is it sick? Is it singular or plural? Uh, it should be plural, wouldn't it? Seuss, the sick. Seuss. Yeah. So he heals the what? He, the diseases. I said diseases. Yeah, that'd be better. I th I think it's probably it's so Joe is probably so Jay is probably he heals. Yeah. And it's a contextual question. What you have to do is look in the context and see what it's talking about. Sometimes it, you know, becomes a debatable as to which which it is, though. But uh, most of the time, I think context will, will take it for us. Okay. Let's give uh, let's give Benjamin a short one now. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Calais, Tus, Adelph. Adelphus, oh no, Adelphus, Philus. And I said, uh, he calls the brothers friends. Okay. He calls the brothers friends. Okay. So it's, a, it's an affectionate term, see, friends. All right. I have some men that are close friends and I have great affection for them. Mm. I, I love everybody, but uh, those men are special. I have a special affection for them. And so what we have is, take the next one, if you will. Okay, <clears throat> Nick, Nick, let me th think about this a minute. Nicodemus, Jesus, S10 didascalos. Uh, opposed you. Okay. Nicodemus says that Jesus is teacher from is teacher from God. Is a teacher. Oh, is not what I teacher. Yeah. Is a well, I just teacher. A, a teacher from God. From God. All right. Okay. Nicodemus says that Jesus is a teacher from God. Now, so this is a statement here, an indirect statement, say, kind of indirect, right? But he's kind of quoting him or saying, he says this. And then Jesus, Jesus is, is another, is, is a nominative case. Nicodemus says that Jesus is, and that's a being verb, teacher come from God. From God. Now then, teacher is what case? Didascalos. Uh, it's a nominative, singular, masculine. It'd be the uh, predicate nominative. Is what That's I. That's correct. That's exactly right. It's predicate nominative, and you're right about the. It's it is nominative, singular, masculine, but it's a predicate nominative, and we know that because Jesus is the subject here. And then this verb, esten, uh, takes a predicate nominative as its object, which follows it. Does that make sense? So, so he's saying Jesus, and what is he? He's a teacher. Where does he come from? He comes from God. Indicating that uh, Nicodemus, and of course this is John 3, uh, might be almost, almost what, the wording of John 3, okay? Pretty close to it. All right, so Nicodemus is a teacher from God. Uh, I think maybe the text reads come from God, okay? All right, probably is, uh, might even be a participle, which we haven't covered yet, and that's quite a ways off participle. Any questions? I'll tell you again, Benjamin, you got another long one. Okay. <laughs> 
Okay. Ioannes, Ioannes, ha baptistes, et toi matse, en te eremo, ten hodon tu curio. Uh, and I said, John the baptizer prepares in the wilderness the way of the Lord. Okay. That's a very interesting study in itself to preparing the way. That's a good translation. Uh, John is in the wilderness and he's preparing the way of the Lord. Uh, it was not uncommon if a king is going to travel a road, they would send uh, road engineers ahead, what we would call civil engineers today, to build a road for him so he could make, travel easily from one place to another. Okay? So they would go build a road for him to travel. Kings were absolute monarchs, weren't they? Okay? But John was preparing the way for Jesus, the way of the Lord. Any question? Okay. We are pretty close to being through with the uh, material. Let's go down to text B if you've done it. Have you done text B? I, oh. got, one, I got number one and two. <laughs> okay, why don't you do yes, number one for us? Who, me? Do the big one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, curios, tong, curion, tong, agotho, gotho, curio. A ho philos, ho philos, philos, a yeah. gapa tong curion. <laughs> the Lord of or from the Lord's. The Lord, with, over from the Lord. Yeah, to with or in the good Lord. The good Lord. Yeah. To or with or by the good Lord. Okay. The, yeah, the friend, the, the friend loves, philos. Yeah, friend. The friend loves the Lord. The friend loves the Lord. Okay, good. Any, any differences there, uh, Benjamin? You add anything there? Uh, no, I think that about does it. Okay, Curios is a benevolent Lord. He does, uh, he does what is good for the other person, which is, of course, it, that would be a loving Lord, wouldn't it? Right. Let's try this one next one. Ha theos estin agape. God is love. All right, now, uh, love is what, what case? Uh, uh, it's just uh, one more minute. <laughs> Oh, what is it? Nominative case. Is it nominative? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> oh, say else is nominative. So what, what is agape? What's its function in the sentence? God is love. To give the it's nature of It's a subject. Naming God again, say. All right. God is being love. God is love. And so love is a predicate nominative telling us about, about God. Let's start with number three next week, okay? I just ring the bell for the end of the class, and we'll go we'll start with it next week. Okay, you have a good night. Yeah, right. thank you, guys. Enjoyed it. Sorry I was late. <laughs> oh, that's no, all right. I'm glad you